Today we're going to talk about how to install Clipper in a quicker method using FluidPy. Now, one of my users on Discord explained that there might be a quicker way to do this, so I thought I'd show you how to do it. So, essentially, Clipper, if you don't already know, is a reduced instruction set version of firmware that takes process commands from the Raspberry Pi that takes the bulk of the processing commands on its 64-bit processor, even though the operating system is 32-bit at the moment. So I'm gonna show you how to do this. We're gonna open up the actual drive. We're gonna pop out the actual SD card and place it in our drive over here so we can image it. So I'm gonna place this in the computer. You may hear a beep. And then I'm gonna go over to the desktop in just a second and show you how to set this up. So essentially what we're gonna do is we're gonna to go to the website for Fluid and we're gonna click on installation, then Fluid Pi, then Fluid Pi over here. Now down below for Windows, you can click to download the install. I've already downloaded and extracted this, so I'm going to just go over to Raspberry Pi Imager. So I'm gonna bring that up in just two seconds. And so we have it right here. So I'm gonna click on Choose OS, Use Custom, then I'm gonna click on Fluid Pi. The storage device is gonna be the SD card. Then I'll click Write, and I'll overwrite Yes. Now at this point, I'll pause the video to let this image, and then I'll pick up when it completes. Okay, now it's finally completed. So what I'm gonna do is click Continue. Then I'm gonna go over to the workbench, pop out the drive, then place it back in the computer. Then I'm gonna go back over to the desktop. I'm going to bring up the drive. And as you can see, there is a FluidPi WP supplicant that we need to open. So we're gonna right click and open with Notepad++. Inside Notepad++, we're gonna remove the comments for WPA and WPA2. And then you're gonna place the name of your router here and the password right here to enter your router so that your Raspberry Pi can connect. Now, PSK stands for phase shift key, which essentially is a password. And then SSID is the ID of your router. So I'm gonna close out of this for a second and I'm actually gonna just copy over what mine is because I've stored it over here so that you don't need to see it. So I'll paste it right here and overwrite it. So I'm gonna close out of this for a moment. I'm also gonna close Raspberry Pi Imager. I'll open up the workbench so you can see what I'm doing. I'll take the drive out. I'll place the drive inside of here and then what I need to do is grab the power cord for this real quick. And this is the actual power cord that I'm gonna be using. So what I'll do is I'll place it inside of here and then place it down right about here. Then I'll switch it on. Now this comes from the Canva kit that I purchased so the power supply is reliable. So this is gonna take a moment to boot. So let's go back over to the desktop and I'm gonna bring up the DOS prompt and type ARP space minus A and press enter. And what you can see here is 192.168.1.1. That's the router in my case. It ends in one, so it's usually a router. The 1.2 just below it is actually the configuration for the computer I'm currently working on, and I believe the last one is my cell phone. 
So we'll give that a moment more, but if it does not show up, what you can do is go to your router in your web browser with 192.168.1.1 if that is your router address, and then look for connected devices. So you should be able to find it that way if this method doesn't work. So I'm gonna up arrow, and I'm going to press enter to see if this shows up as another device. So as you can see, there now is a new device, which is 192.168.1.5. So let's go over to the browser, and we'll open a new instance, and we'll say 192.168.1.5, and then press Enter. Now that it actually is working, we can see Fluid. We have to learn a couple of quick things. So first of all, we have our home, then we have jobs, then we have history, tuning or tune, then we have configuration, system, and settings. So the first thing we're going to do is go to settings. And down at the bottom I need to show you this. So it checks for updates automatically because it's set to on right now. So we're going to try one quick update for Clipper. And essentially, you're going to want to do all of these, but I'm only showing you Clipper for the moment. The other ones take a little bit of time. So I'm going to say finished. Then I'm going to go up to configuration. And in configuration, we need to find our printer.config because it's not in here. So we're going to click on configuration examples and type octopus. And here it is. Now, unfortunately, you can't drag it straight across. So I'm going to right click, download, then I'm going to keep it, then I'm going to open it up in the folder. And as you can see, I have an instance right here. So I'm going to bring this down and drag it across. Now I have it over there. So I'm going to right click, I'm going to rename it, and I'm going to rename it to printer.config and then press enter. So now it's the correct file. So we'll take a quick look inside with edit. And as you can see, it talks about the X stepper that's drive zero. It also talks about drive one, two, which is your Z stepper, and then your extruder steppers. Now there's certain settings in here that are mapped to pins. So I'll show you that real quick. If you go over to Big Tree Tech and you go to repositories, and then you type octo print or excuse me octopus pardon me click on that then hardware then pins down here you'll be able to see what your pins are so for the enable pin it's pf14 that's how they map the pins so we can look over here and see if pf14 is in fact there which it is now, in the case of our actual end stops, they're integrated into the X axis for the drivers. So, in this case, I'm going to be hooking up a special stepper. So, I'm going to put an exclamation point in for that, which means negate. So, if it's true, it becomes false. If it's false, it becomes true. But in this case, it's either going to be triggered or open, I believe. So, it'll be one or the other that is flipped. So, there are other settings down in here. I'm not going to go too much into this because it's a setup video, but as you can see, there's different types of steppers that you can integrate in. Right now, they're commented out. That's why they're gray, but I'll let you play with that on your own time. The other important thing is going to be the serial port configuration. So we're going to need to get that right in a moment. So that's what I'm going to show you how to do right now for setting up the firmware. So if we go over to TerraTerm and we say file new, we can say that the host name is 192.168.1.5, the port is 22, and SSH is the way we can communicate with it. And SSH means secure shell. It's not Telnet. So we'll click OK. Then we'll say continue. Then we'll put in the Raspberry Pi password for the username first is Pi, 
then the password is going to be rasp berry and then enter. So now we're logged in. So to set up the actual configuration, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to say change directory. Then we're going to use the little shortcut symbol forward slash clipper and press enter. So now we're in the clipper directory. Now we're going to type make menu config and press enter. This will bring us into the configuration. So I'm going to hit spacebar to enable it. Then I'm going to pick the correct MCU. In this case, it's the STM32. I'll press spacebar. Then we have to figure out what our processor type is within that. So if we go back over to the browser, we can see at the very top of this file that the actual clue that we're looking for is the F446. So over here, we'll right arrow, we'll arrow down to the F446, hit spacebar, and now it says that it's 32 gigabits, or excuse me, 32 kilobytes for the bootloader and the processor clock is eight megahertz. So let's check on that by going back over to the actual config file. So it's saying to use a 12 megahertz crystal. So that's what's setting the rhythm for the clock cycles. So we're gonna go back over here and we're gonna change this to 12 with the spacebar. So now we're all set with this. We're gonna hit the Q button, then the Y button, and then what we're gonna do after that is we're gonna type make. And make is the essentially the same thing as build in Marlin. So right now it's doing a series of compiles and it's building the actual firmware. In this case, the firmware is gonna be called clipper.bin. So we're gonna to have to do some changes. So essentially when this completes, what we're gonna to have to do is go over to FileZilla. Inside FileZilla, we'll type 192.168.1.5. Then we'll say the username is pi, and the password is gonna be raspberry, and then the port is gonna be 22. Then we'll say quick connect. We'll say okay, and then we'll go to the Clipper directory, then we'll go to the output directory. And then what we need to do is find the actual firmware, which is clipper.bin and copy it across. Then we can go over to our downloads folder. And inside here, I'm going to delete the old firmware that was in here, if I can see it, which I don't. So what we'll do is we'll rename this to firmware. and press enter. So we're all set there. Next thing we're gonna have to do is go over to the desktop. On the desktop, what we're gonna need to do is actually remove the drive for the octopus, and we're gonna have to place it inside of here. Then we'll place this back on the computer, and you may hear a beep. Then we'll go back over to the desktop, and on the computer, what we'll do is we'll first check the drive. So on the drive, it says firmware.cur from a previous load of firmware.bin. If we want to reuse this, we're going to have to rename it to firmware.bin to load it, but we're going to keep it. So we're going to have to rename it so it doesn't change. So we'll call it temp underscore firmware. And then we'll call it TEP or TMP. And that way we'll know what it is. So now we'll go back over. We'll right click on the firmware and we'll send it to the USB drive. Then we'll go back to check. And then we'll go back to the workbench, pop out the drive, place the drive inside our reader and to power this, we have to be on USB power, which we currently are. So I'm gonna pick up the cord and I'm actually gonna connect this to the Raspberry Pi. So that goes there. 
and then over here we're going to plug this in so it can flash. Once that's complete, we actually have to go back over to the desktop. We're going to go back to our TerraTerm session and figure out what the serial connection is. So a little quick way to do this, I actually kept the command up over here. This is an ls of the dev directory with serial by ID for anything that is displayed. So we'll copy that and then we'll go over here, right click and press enter. That is the actual path to our device. So I'm going to copy that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go back over to the configuration that we have over here for fluid, find the MCU, which is our processor. And I'm going to paste the command over it right here. Then I'm going to click save and then save and restart just for giggles. Now it's going to take a second and there may be some issues. So these are the issues that it says it has. So let's see if we can fix that. So currently there's a temperature issue. All these things we'll figure out in a second, but let me show you this quick. We need to create these little stamps inside the file. So if we're over here and we go to settings and we right click on this and then do edit again, we're going to then add these labels. So we have to go back over here, copy display status, then paste it. Then we go back over here. We copy the print and resume, paste it here. Now there's one more. I would show you the way to see it again, but it's actually all the way down here for cancel print. So I'm gonna copy this. Then I'm going to go back over to the fluid configuration for our printer config and paste it right here. Then I'll click save and restart and we'll see if there's an issue, which there will be. So there's still an issue with actually connecting and I'll show you how to resolve that in just a second. So it's saying it's shutting down because there's not a correct configuration. So we'll go over to the workbench. We'll power down the board and we have to connect a few things just to make this work on the bench top. So I'm going to go back over to the computer for a second and on the computer I'm going to go to the big tree tech. I'm going to find out where our actual thermistors are because I can't see them. So the thermistors I believe are right here. So you see TB that's the bed thermistor or thermistor bed then you have T0 so we got to connect two things to there then we also have to do the end stops and the end stops are located in here someplace so we have diag 0 which is probably X diag 1 and diag 2 so we're gonna connect those as well so let's go back to the workbench I'm gonna take out a thermistor which is a way to tell temperature and I'm going to find the connection for this which I believe is right here that's for the bed then i'm going to do the pardon me for a second I'm going to do the connection for one of the end stops so we know that the order that these actually function in is voltage ground signal so in this case black is going to be ground and red is going to be signal so it's going to be the bottom two pins. So that would be our Y axis. Now we'll do our Z axis, which is going to be right down here. And then this one, which I flipped the logic on for this end stop, is going to be, according to what we see here, Red is on top for voltage, then ground is in the center, and green is signal. So it's going to go right here. So we've got those configured. Now the only thing I'm missing is one of my thermistors. So let me grab that and place that in as well. So this is for the thermistor for the hot end. So we've got those connected. 
Now we can reconnect this and then we can go back over to the desktop and we can attempt to reconnect. So let's try restart Clipper. And it looks like if we go over here, we're connected. So it looks like we have the actual thermistor power. So to test this, what I can do is go to the workbench. I can grab one of the thermistors with my finger and the heat from my finger will cause it to change temperature. Then we can go back over to the desktop and check it. So on the desktop, you can see that it spiked up when I touched it with my finger. So let's try the end stops. So if you scroll down here and you type M119 and press enter, you can see they all say open. So I'm gonna test one of them with my finger being the X axis. So let's bring this up. I'm going to then click this down and hold it with my finger and then go back over to the desktop and do the command for M119 again. And now it says triggered. So I'll release my finger and I'll try the M119 again. And that looks good. So if you like my tutorial, please press the like button and subscribe. And also for my patrons, I placed a thank you scroll at the end of this tutorial. So please remember to like and subscribe if you're new. And if you feel like joining Patreon, it's, it's down in the description or summary of the video, as well as Discord. So everyone take care and have a nice day.